Hi, Brian Seger here again, certified personal trainer and baby boomer fitness expert, where today I'm gonna to talk about how to avoid weight gain from stress over the age of 60. So there's a lot of things going on in life for a lot of people right now, and that's what I'm hearing from our community. Um, and usually with stress comes bad behaviors that incur weight gain. So uh, with a lot going on, you know, there's the C word out there right now, can't talk about that otherwise uh, this channel will demonetize the video so just we won't talk about the C word um, but also you know um, people have their parents are getting older and you know they're deciding do I want to put them in a home do I want to keep them um, at my place um, you know kids are leaving the home uh, you know job situation so just a lot going on in life right now and the question that I've been getting a lot of is like I'm doing really good to start my day and then I have the desire to reach for pizza, the drink, the ice cream, the chocolate, whatever that thing is. And then usually on the other side of that is then the emotion of guilt or anger with themselves, which then throws off the rest of the week of keeping the weight off. And that's why you started this whole journey anyway is to keep the weight off, to be more functionally fit. So let me give you some quick strategies to keep that weight off right now. So best thing you could do is uh, you, you have one of these uh, situations or stress going on in your life is just go hit the gym. You know, get in the gym, get those two to three workouts in per week. If you're not comfortable getting back to the gym yet, do an online workout at, or go outside, go for a walk in nature, um, you know, do one of these at-home workouts from the channel here. What that's going to do, it's going to uh, give you some endorphins. It's going to empower you, make you feel uh, stronger. Another thing that works really well that I've seen in the community and a lot of the online coaching clients that we've taken on recently um, it, and really positive feedback is just getting back to meal planning and how you can at home start meal planning effectively right now is just find out what your daily uh, caloric burn is per day and just stay at that and then work on getting your calories just to that burn and expanding your calorie deficit um, from activity. So it comes on to planning your meals. So the easiest way to do that is get, again, find your calorie target and then from there um, start with a protein goal, usually one gram per body weight um, and then backfill that with your healthy carbs and healthy fats. And if you need help with that, um, you just join my email list and we'll send that out to you or join one of our communities. Next thing you can do for yourself, just make sure you get some sleep. Um, you gotta get seven to nine hours of sleep per night. The main thing you need sleep for right now, it's gonna help to recover uh, from the workouts that you are doing. The other thing what it does is when you sleep, uh, your cortisol levels go down. So um, those stress hormones are going down. Best ways to get sleep right now is to focus on creating a sleep schedule. And I learned this from a good friend of mine, uh, Craig Ballantyne. Uh, he is one of the most disciplined men I know and he uh, gets so much done during the day and he revolves his whole day around effective planning and sleeping. So um, he has, um, a strategy where you have a sleep cycle and you follow that, a sleep schedule I mean, and you follow that seven days per week. So what you're gonna do is go to bed at the same time, get up at the same time, and what that's going to do is make sure that you're getting uh, the proper sleep. And on the other side of that, he, uh, what I've been doing is using a reverse alarm that I learned from him, and in that reverse alarm, uh, I have it set, you know, I want to go to bed at 9, so 8 o'clock my reverse alarm goes off on my phone and that signals to me I need to start winding down my day so I can get to bed by 9 o'clock so I can be up at 4 o'clock so I can be effective and ready to serve you guys. So um, give that, you know, give that one a try. Um, the next thing is community. You got to get a positive community. You got to get it off your chest. You can't hold it all in. Uh, there, uh, I was reading a men's health article and they were showing the stats that you know men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s are having uh, greater health problems now more than ever, heart attack, stroke, because of stress. We're, we're dealing with more uh, on our plate than we've ever dealt with before. And a lot of it has to do is we're just holding it in. So you know, getting part of a great community 
lets you meet other people that you'll find is you're not alone. Um, you're not alone. There's people out there going through the same thing, but you're going to see there's going to be people that are finding better ways to cope with this st their stress. And then also you're going to then be able to find positive solutions. So get part of a positive community. Um, it's one of the best things that you can do for yourself. Uh, get yourself a coach. You know, somebody you can talk to about you know, what's going on in your week. We all know we got to you know, take in less. We got to exercise more. But the stress word is what throws you off. So when you have a coach, what they're able to do is look at your whole week and you may start your week really good, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, great, but then things may start going off the rails and you'll start noticing that pattern. Oh, the coach helps you see that pattern. And then next thing you know, it kicks in again and then you start getting down all the way to the triggers that are triggering the stress and you just learn way better ways to cope with it and you're achieving your goals, you're feeling better, you're leaner, you're stronger and you're just living your best life ever. And don't you deserve that anyway? I mean, talking to another client the other day, um, he said, you know, I've got everything I want in my life. You know, I've got my great family, I got my grandchildren, you know, I had a successful career, I got a great wife. I've got everything I want, but I want my health. So it's just time to get rid of the stress, to get what you've wanted before. Uh, stress melts away when you have gratitude, which leads into my next thing, which is breathing. An effective strategy uh, I've implied and a lot of my clients use is a breathing technique. And this breathing technique is two in through the nose, one out through the mouth. And the best way to do it is first thing in the morning, putting your hand over your heart. And you know, you've got 10 minutes in your day. You know, don't tell me you don't have 10 minutes. If you don't have 10 minutes, you're not trying. So, um, or you're just making an excuse and you don't want to improve but you're watching this video, so I know you're trying to improve. You're, you are committed to improving. So what you're going to do is when you breathe, you're gonna put your hand over your heart, you know, close your eyes, out through the mouth one, and then think of three things you're really grateful for. Not just think about these things, like I have clients that have tried this, and they're like, you know, I'm grateful for this, check. I'm grateful for this, check. I'm grateful for this, check. This isn't a checklist, this is a feeling. So go into your heart and really feel the three things you're grateful for. Your family, your career, that you're healthy already and you get to expand your health. Um, you know, maybe you live in a great area. So focus on three things you're grateful for first thing in the morning and then like a lot of times there's a time in the day where the, you know, like back to the original question we started the video. It's like, you know, I've done so great all day but what, is my challenge is usually it's four o'clock five o'clock six o'clock and that's when you start to fall off the rails maybe right before you notice that's the time you trigger that you take that 10 minutes at four o'clock you go to your car that's what I do during the day I drive my car to if you so if you see me out here in Vancouver um, and I'm in my car and my eyes closed I'm doing this but I'll park my car somewhere I'll put my hand over my heart I'll think of three things I'm grateful for I'll pray and it brings me back to center and it helps me with my stress and some of my triggers I know for a fact my whole life I've been a stress eater I could tell you a story about when I joined the military um, there was these ice cream bars that I really enjoyed but I was really scared about basic training really scared about leaving home and uh, I end up like buying these things like every day and kill the box every day. Um, and I went to basic training about 20 pounds overweight. Not many people know this story. And I had to be in the fat boy uh, exercise program when I started. That's what they called it. So I know uh, there's a special word for it. Today. It's like uh, talking down to people that are overweight. But that's what they called the program at the time. That was like 24 years ago. But anyway, I was in this fat boy program till I was able to lose the weight. And, th and I learned that about myself that I was a stress eater. So taking that 10 minutes, and I'll do it from time to time too because I'm human and that's why I have a coach. But make sure that you uh, take those 10 minutes each day to modify the stress. Lastly, you gotta find some uh, healthy distractions. Some, um, so like stress usually sometimes becomes internal for people and you get locked in and you can't get out. That's why the community's good. But the other thing that's good about it is a positive distraction. Find things that distract yourself. You know, it's like, like stress isn't 911. I mean, like when you get stressed, you have to dial 911 and you have to like, all right, uh, you know, it's an emergency. No, stress sometimes isn't a 911 thing. So if it isn't urgent, isn't great and important, 
it shouldn't give you that much energy, but I understand sometimes we internalize all that. So let's, when you feel that stress, find a positive distraction. Go for a walk. Have a good book that you like to read. Um, get a podcast. Watch the YouTube channel. Um, that's why I do videos like this too. Not only the exercise, but we got to deal with the other side of it too. Uh, the mindset and everything else going on. And the, the old saying is, is what you focus on grows. So um, if you're focusing on healthy distractions, you'll find like, you'll maybe find an ab routine that you like and then you incorporate it three times a week and notice your core is getting tighter. Maybe you're going for a walk and like after every walk you feel empowered. So now every day you're like finding a way you want to go for that walk. Maybe you find a really good podcast. Now you're listening to it three, four times a week and there's strategies you're picking up in there that are making your life better and what you focus on grows. So um, I really am glad to have done this video for you today. Um, these are going to help you avoid weight gain um, and get rid of the stress and have your best life over 50 and 60. Uh, down in the comment section below, let me know which one uh, has positively affected, will positively affect your life or works best for you. Um, also down below, I know I talked about having a positive community. If you're seeing somebody down in the comment section and they made a comment, give them support. Maybe they become your new friend. They become your outlet. Like maybe exchange, you know, if you guys become friends here, you can exchange your Instagram handles or your Facebook friends or whatever so you guys can become friends. So uh, thank you so much for this video and uh, let's get rid of stress. Let's live your best life. Have a great day.